Join us in the fight to restore liberty and American exceptionalism. Together, let's make the case that our charters of freedom are worth defending and honoring. Right here is where the great American experiment comes alive. Let's get to work. This is Shane Krauser, and today I'm here with uh, Ammon Bundy, who is the son of Clyman Bundy. Of course, this relates to the uh, face-off that uh, the Bundy family had with the Bureau of Land Management uh, in March through April of 2014. And we know that at this point, the battle is far from over. But this is an opportunity to come together with Ammon, who again is the son of Cliven, to talk a little bit about what happened during that confrontation, why the family uh, did what they did, and uh, where, we, where we go from here. Ammon, thanks so much for being with us today. Thanks, Shane. Appreciate it. Let's talk about, uh, first and foremost, the underlying principles. Why is it that your father, your family, and many of the supporters that came together did what you ultimately did? That is, stood against the Bureau of Land Management, stood against the federal government as they came in to try and take your land. Yeah, um, well, to understand the situation a little bit, my, in Clark County there was uh, 53 ranchers that ran cattle in Clark County. And uh, now there's only one, and that is my, my father. And he was almost, uh, as we know, a month or so ago, was put out of business again. They almost gathered his cattle. Uh, he is still ranching now, but he's the only one. Um, and if we look at the history of the, the, the land and what happened to it, my family came in there 140 years ago and uh, established that land, homes, homesteaded that land, and began to run cattle on that land. And they've, they've been there ever since. Uh, and so... So was this in the 1870s, 1880s when your, yeah, your family homesteaded the 1877 land? 1877 is when uh, they first came in there and, and began homesteading and ranching that land. And Nevada becomes a state around 1864? That's correct. So, so at the time that they're homesteading, Nevada is already a state. That is correct. Nevada is a state. Um, and Nevada was actually one of the earlier states in the West to become a state. Uh, it was during the Civil War, and it's called the Battleborn State. Uh, so, um, we w it was a state when we moved into there, and uh, we homesteaded that area. And as uh, many may understand, may not understand, but th basically, when you use the land and you you claim the land and you're benefiting from it, then ultimately it it, be it became your land, and that's how the whole Western United States was established. Uh, or all the whole United States in, in general was established that way. You go into an area, you homestead it, and uh, basically uh, stake, uh, stake your claim and that becomes your land. So and Nevada recognized this as, as uh, uh, land and, and rights that were uh, my, my forefathers. And then they were passed down from generation to generation until my dad received them. My, my grandpa actually bought some other people, ranchers out, so he added those rights to the land. My father also bought ranchers out and, and added those rights to his land, and ultimately that's where those rights came from. Now the federal government becomes involved, and uh, at this point in time, their intent is to take the land away. And it sounds to me as though your family, uh, especially your father, is standing on principles of the Constitution, or at least his interpretation of what the Constitution has to say about land. Yeah, so I mean, the the Bureau of Land Management first came in. They they were established in 1946, so this was quite a few years later after my family had uh, homestead land. But they came in as land managers. Uh, they were both basically like a liaison between the federal government and the ranchers and uh, they were managers of the land. Um, well, then the BLM was established and the regu regulations became so heavy and basically were uh, putting these ranchers out of business and they finally had to say, well, wait a minute, we need to figure out what's going on. You know, much like us today, it really doesn't matter until it really uh, hits us in the pocketbook or, it take, you know, it affects us, our livelihood or, or our safety. Then we start to, like, really begin to uh, dig into it and find out what's going on. So they, these ranchers got together and they basically uh, researched the laws, they researched the, uh, uh, the whole situation, and they found something uh, better than they ever imagined. They, they actually found that not only did they, um, did they have rights to the land, um, that, but they actually found that the federal government actually didn't own the land. 
that it was state land and uh, so at that point uh, many of the ranchers debated what they should do they they understood this they had this coalition they were actually quite strong but they debated uh, what they should do and uh, most of them didn't feel like they could win the fight with the federal government. Just so we're clear, we're here in Arizona and, Ar and the federal government claims to own about 50% uh -huh. of Arizona's land. In Nevada, they claim to own well over 80% of Nevada's land. And you're telling me that individuals coming together, these ranchers, your father included, took the position that in fact they, they don't own that land and they can't own that land constitutionally. That's right. They they took the Constitution, they also took many of the, the Supreme Court rulings and they I mean they they did the best they could and under this Cattlemen's Association. Uh, lawyers, uh, legal advisors, uh, many of them studying deep into it themselves and they found that in fact that this was not BLM land, federal land, that it was state land. And let me uh, just out to outline those principles here. Uh, if we look in the uh, United States Constitution, Article 1, Section 8, it says, it outlines the three uh, things that the federal government must do to own land inside a state. Now, I'm not, we're not arguing that the U.S. government can't own U.S. territory, which is land that has not been uh, enabled as into a statehood or become a state, right? Or I'm not arguing that, or no one's ever argued that. If it's U.S. territory, then the, and I will talk a little bit about that, if it's U.S. territory, then Congress has all the rights to make all the rules according to that area. But what we're saying is that the state of Nevada has clearly become a state, and all the land within her borders are state land, okay? And so the Constitution outlines what uh, what the federal government must do in order to own land inside a state. So in Article 1, Section 8, it says that uh, in order for the federal government to own land, they have to purchase b by consent of the legislatures of the state. So they have to first have consent from the state legislatures, that basically permission from the state to have it. They have to purchase it and they can only use it for erection of forts, magazines, arsenals, dockyards, and other needful buildings. Okay, so those are the three things they have to purchase, or they have to have permission from the state, from the state legislatures. They have to purchase it, and they can only use it for the erection of forts, magazines, arsenals, do dockyards, and other needful buildings. Nowhere in there does it uh, say that the federal government can own public land inside a state. Period. There's nowhere in the Constitution that outlines that. And so, you know, the ranchers are looking at this going, well, where in the Constitution, the supreme law of the land, does it say that the federal government can own land? So, so. Um, you've outlined Article 1, Section 8. Are there any other provisions that your family or some of the other ranchers were looking to to provide support that the federal government was very limited in the uh, land that they could own and possess and dispose of? Exactly. So we're like, the question was posed, well, if it's, if they're not saying it's state land, because we know, according to the Constitution, that they can't own state land unless they did these three things and they did not do that. So they must be considering it as U.S. territory. Okay. In Article 4, Section 3, it says that Congress shall have power to dispose and make up all needful rules and regulations respecting the territory or property belonging to the United States. And nothing in this Constitution shall, so, shall, shall be so construed as to prejudice any claims of the United States of any particular state. So the question is, it's either state land or it's U.S. territory, right? I mean, that's, there's only two ways that the federal government can own land, public land, okay? As a U.S. territory, or as state land under those three rules. They didn't follow those three rules, so they must be considering it U.S. territory. So just to be clear, uh, the Bundy family is not taking the position that the federal government doesn't have a role. Uh, you're, just, you're taking the position that their role is very limited. It's the U.S. Constitution that outlines what they're permitted to do. And you're making a, sto a state sovereignty claim, right, that the state of Nevada uh, possesses property, number one, and that uh, the, the family individually owns property. That There's kind of a, a hierarchy, if you will. The, the individual, the state uh, mm -hmm. potentially owns exactly. land, and then the federal government can own land for limited purposes. That's correct. And it's outlined all in the Constitution. So we challenged 
we challenged the BLM about on jurisdiction. We said, this is state land. It's clearly inside the state borders. The state has been declared as a, as a sovereign state by Abraham Lincoln, of all people, said that we, this state has been uh, given all the rights and equal footing. He said it two times in the, when he declared this Nevada as a state. Uh, so we're challenging that this is not U.S. territory, that this is state land. And you did not purchase it, you did not get consent from the legislatures, and you're not using it for the proper pur purposes. So we challenge jurisdiction.